went back to the background um, trying to explain why an Ireland that was outwardly peaceful, probably the most peaceful it had been in, 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 in centuries, in the early 20th century, suddenly went to out, outright war. What we really wanted to focus on what the motivations were for people to have participated in this event. So you have a lot of different groups coming from a lot of different ideologies and philosophies. How did an Ireland which was outwardly at peace in 1900 come to rebellion in 1916? In 1913, two armies had formed in Ireland. The Ulster Volunteer Force was formed to stop home rule which would give Ireland a level of independence from Britain. This had been promised by the British government to come into law by 1914. The Irish volunteers were formed as a response to the Ulster volunteers. But why had these two groups been necessary? And who was joining them? Two of the objects that we have here represent the two traditions, nationalism and unionism, that would have been prevalent in the years before the 1916 Rising. One of them is an orange order collaret, has a number of iconic images on it. Uh, LOL, which stands for Loyal Orange Lodge, might mean something different in modern terms. Some of the other images there represent images from the Old Testament, which are important in the Protestant religion, the Protestant tradition. We have this walking stick here, which would come from the nationalist tradition. People who would have primarily looked at Ireland and said, we want, to keep, we want to give Ireland some form of independence from Britain. So you can see engraved in the stick the names of several key Irish nationalist leaders. Uh, and also, as you can see, like shamrocks all along it, and you can see other kind of important Celtic images. And these would have been used, say, when Irish nationalists went on, say, marches as a way as of showing off their side in this sort of political debate. They would have been people who supported the tradition of Charles Stuart Parnell and under Redmond and John Dillon were constitutional nationalists, quite different from those who came out and fought in 1916. And what about, say, for um, young children? Would they have joined these groups as well? Or would there have been an equivalent for them? Uh, there would have been equivalents, but they would have been like things like the Boys Brigade uh, in Ulster. And you have the Fianna Erden Boy Scouts, which is a nationalist scouting organisation in the rest of Ireland which was founded in 1909 by Countess Markovich and Bulmer Hobson. And within groups like these, these kids would have learned, say, you know, Irish traditions like Irish dancing, the Irish language, but they'd also would have been militarised, would have been taught how to use weapons, to bring weapons around the country. And actually here in the National Museum, we have the uniform of a boy called John Kelly, who would have been 10 years old, wearing his uniform when he fought in the 1916 Rising down at the Four Courts. For these kids, these decisions would have been based on, you know, what politics their, their parents had, what neighbourhoods they came from. They didn't necessarily get to choose themselves what areas they would go to. Not necessarily, but you have to remember as well that Ireland was very militarised mm -hmm. at this period. So when you're at the age of about 10, 11, 12, like John Kelly was, age 10 when he fought in the Rising, it wasn't unusual to be involved in those type of organisations. So we have these two traditions now at this time, we've got the Unionists and the Nationalists. So the question is, how does this lead us to the 1916 Rising? And indeed, are these groups even involved in the Rising in the first place? Well, when the war broke out, Ireland was probably on the verge of civil war. You had the Ulster Volunteer Force who were drilling and arming themselves in Ulster, and you had the Irish Volunteers in the rest of the country. When the war broke out, Carson called on the Ulster Volunteers to fight with the British forces in uh, Europe, as did John Redmond. He was asking the Irish volunteers. Obviously. The Irish volunteers. And the Irish volunteers split between those who didn't want to support the British war effort and those who did. Around 11,000 followed Owen MacNeill and remained as the Irish volunteers. And it's that group that formed the core of those that came out and fought in 1916. They're the ones that the IRB, people like say Patrick Pearce and uh, Thomas Clark are looking and saying we can use them for this rebellion. So then we see by Easter 1916, we see that small group being led by Patrick Pearce. We see a small army called the Irish Citizens Army led by a Scottish man called James Connolly and about 300 women from Cumann Avon going out, taking over key buildings around the city here in Dublin and beginning the 1916 Easter Rising. <laughs> 